Guitar practice session 91524. These are basically fairly sloppy practice sessions as I practice whatever I feel like I need to work on at any given time, hoping the practice sessions help me generate a routine, uh, possibly help me to verbalize what I'm thinking so that I can get it in my head more easily, possibly help other people who are working on similar types of things and possibly provide for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the things that I am doing here. Now, the thing that I'm doing is just a little bit different than some other people that you might be looking at if you're looking at the guitar sessions is that I'm gonna be using my worksheet and of course, Excel. I'm gonna have the low or heavy string on top, the one closest to the ceiling, so that when I'm sitting behind the guitar, I'm looking at it from left to right, top to bottom. That matches what I'm looking on at the sheet which will be left to right, uh, top to bottom. And when I put my guitar on the screen, I'm gonna make a lot of it possibly looking like I'm left-handed. So when you look at what I'm playing, it will also be top to bottom, left to right, kind of from the perspective as though you were behind uh, the guitar. So what I'm gonna think about doing is first actually do the practice session and then kind of do the recap on the introduction. So this is the recap of the introduction where basically what I did today is work on the uh, major scale or the Ionian uh, mode, working on position number one, which you could call the g shape position if you're thinking in terms of caged shapes or possibly the mode number six, absolute mode number six, the Aeolian mode or uh, the major scale shape if you wanna think about it th that way. Remembering that when I look at these modes, I'm gonna give them absolute numbers using the major scale as our key, as our reference point, as though we're like a physics situation where everything is relative, but I'm looking at where I stand, which is gonna be the Ionian and, and name all the other modes as related to Ionian uh, so that I can have a numbering system that will be absolute even as I go through the other modes. Although this time, of course, I will be in the Ionian or the major mode. As I'm in uh, this mode, we'll take a look at the intervals and we'll take a look at the other mode starting points and we'll take a look at the whole steps and half steps to uh, walk uh, through it. We'll also take a look at the pentatonic scale a little bit and see how the shapes differ from the pentatonic uh, to the major scale, telling little stories on how I, that I think could help us to memorize things by having like a narrative around uh, where things are located. And so that'll be the general gist of it. And then towards the end, I kind of mess around with, uh, uh, I play the Smurf song. Uh, I try to play a Smurf song, a Smurf Christmas song since we're getting Christmassy. And then I played a couple other Hallelujah I was messing with, and uh, which is kind of in the key of C. And then uh, like Green Sleeves, I think I was just kind of messing with that tune and I don't know. So then I just kind of messed around and then I was just noodling around somewhat sloppily. So it's nothing. Uh, so I was just noodling around after that. Uh, and those, that's basically what I was noodling with. Most of those are in the key of a related mode, I guess, uh, C major or, you know, related minor and so on. Today, I'm once again going to be looking at the position number one, what I would call position number one, this time in the C major, and hopefully looking at the seven note scale as, re as well as the related uh, pentatonic scale. So position one over here, I can name it multiple different things. I call it generically position one, as many people do, but you can also call it according to the cage shape position, looking at the related major scale, which is what we're focused on here, which is uh, the C. And you can see that you have this G shape in it. So I could call this a G shaped position, just naming the whole position based on that, because that ties into this open uh, shape if it was a G shape back here. And then I can also call this shape uh, a what I would call a minor mode uh, shape or absolute mode number six, minor mode, because if I played from the start of the shape, which of course would be the A here, then I would be playing a minor mode. So I could call it mode shape number six, right? Or the minor mode, otherwise known as Aeolian. But we're focused on the major, so I wanna be focusing on the major uh, within this shape. 
So the first question could be then, well, how do I get to the major if I know that I'm in like position one, which is like the minor mode? Well, I can say, okay, well, the minor I know is the sixth. So that's the sixth. So if that's the sixth, I need to get to the first and there's a circle. So I can just count up until I get to eight, which is equivalent to one, if that's six of the related majors. So six, seven, eight. And then that's gonna, that can tell me that this is gonna be where I'm focused in on. So that's one way <clears throat> that we might look at it. The other way we can look at it <clears throat> is by shapes. And I can say, I've been breaking out the shapes here into, when I'm looking at seven notes, I have my double stop box or the house I've been calling it or the square. And then I've got the two note per string meat of the hamburger or the flat uh, instead of the, instead of the two, two, two string apartment places. And then I've got the house or the box uh, double stop, which has been shifted up because there was an earthquake that shifted up the ground there. And then it goes back to the double stop box, which you can see because these top strings are repetitive. So we're gonna see those shapes repeat. Now, if I go to the minor, I mean, if I go to the five note pentatonic, you will recall that we're gonna have to ch change that into the shape of this hamburger. I'm gonna call it a hamburger because these are only two note per string shapes. They never have three notes per string. And then we're gonna have what I call the dumb bar, the barbell, the dumb bar, the bar, right? Meaning we have the bar, but we only play the parts on the end of it, like if, as though it's a dumbbell, right? So we have the dumbbell on the end of the bars. Those are the ones we play. So that's gonna be in the pentatonic where we remove two notes. So I'm, I'm making a story up <clears throat> about these shapes because we're gonna see these shapes repeated all the time. And so my story is, if I name my modes and I try to say, well, where do they live? Well, here's the house over here, this box. And C, because C major is like the richest of them because he's the most popular, then he lives in the penthouse of the box house looking towards the hole up here, which is the ocean. So he's got the ocean view. And then under the C, you will recall that we have the other uh, major mode, the other uh, major mode here that we took a look at before, the Lydian mode, which is, you know, the four mode, the one, four, five are the major modes. And it's also in the front, but it's down below, but it still has like the ocean view because it's looking forward. And then on the back of the house, you've got the, the Lydian is right behind the major. And the Lydian is the weird one. So that's like in the attic. So that's kind of in the storage capacity. It's kind of, no one really goes there that much except when they really need something. So it's, it's so that's kind of a weird one. And then down below, you've got the uh, Phrygian mode, which is a minor mode. That's why it's in the back of the house, but it's still within the, the penthouse. The other two minors are outside of the house completely. Uh, and that's gonna be the A over here, you'll recall has its own place uh, it's outside and it kind of moves around. The miners are kind of more, they move around. They don't always stay in the penthouse or in one place because they have the two note per string and then it's over here and the hamburger. And then we've got the Dorian, which is at the bottom hanging with the minor here and then over here. And then you've got the, the, the Mixolydian, which is a major mode but it kind of hangs out with the minors because it's got that cool flat seven, which is kind of in common uh, with the minors making it bluesy and whatnot. So it's actually over here and the two note per string hamburger hanging on the flat in the flat with the uh, with the minor mode. <clears throat> and so that's the general story. So we're focused over here in the penthouse of the house, the box on the right hand side. That's where the major scale lives looking towards this ocean over here all right so that's the story so then we've got then here and here down here's my c's okay all right and then if i was to if i was to count up from uh there or if i just look at that shape let's just analyze the shape i'm at what i would call the top of the uh, double stop square or house and then it goes down to the bottom of what I would call the double stop square or house and then it goes from what I call the two note per string flat or meat of the hamburger 
as we'll see when because that's the one shape that's the same for the pentatonic as well as the major it's the meat or middle part of the hamburger and then we're going to go then back which we naturally do uh, after we get to the flat or the meat of the hamburger to the top of the house uh, doubles or box double stop which has been shifted up at the bottom because of the earthquake and then boom we stop it right there so if I count that out from here we're gonna say all right that's gonna be one two three four five six seven eight or back to one and that's of course the octave okay so then I can look at my half steps let's just look at the half steps and say where do the half steps lie now, if I look at my intervals, notice the half steps are in the box, but this one starts like at the top of the box. So I'm not gonna get to the half step until I get to the bottom of the box. And then there's two notes in between until I get to the top of the box again. Whereas, you know, if I had a mode that started down here, like the Phrygian, then, or I'm sorry, if I had a mode that started back here, or like the minor that started here, then I would hit my half steps here and only have one note in between, right? So that's why one way you can think of like where, where are those half steps line? Well, there's a, if I start on the C, because there's that leading tone into it, I know that the note right before it is the half step, but that's gonna be at the end, right? Leading us back into the C. So I'm gonna say, all right, where, where are my half steps? We're gonna say we have the first of the major or Ionian, is a whole st well, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on now. Something ain't right here. Something ain't right here. Hold on. So the first to the second of the major scale is a whole step. The second to the third of the major scale is a whole step. And then we get back into that box. The three to the four, there's our half step. And the half steps are going to be kind of important because th those are ways that you can kind of you know, drill in on where the differences are. And so that's uh, three to four, and then four to five is a whole step, and then five to six is a whole step, six to seven is a whole step, and then seven to eight, back home to one, is gonna be the half step. So where are the half steps, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, between three, four, and then seven and eight. Three, four, seven, eight. Three, four here, seven and eight is right above it is the other way we can kind of see it. Okay, let's go into our uh, intervals. <clears throat> let's go into the intervals then. So we're gonna say that if we go the second of the major scale has, of course, now obviously, we want to know the major intervals because every other major mode, the one, four, five, uh, we're going to be comparing it, right? The, the, the major Ionian, the Lydian, and the Mixolydian. So, and so those other two modes are going to differentiate from this mode in usually like one, one, only one of the intervals. So we have, of course, the perfect first, which is always is what it is, because that's where we start. Major second, which makes sense, because we're in the major scale, make, everything kind of lines up and makes sense. We have the, the, the major third, makes sense. Perfect fourth, the perfects are usually in most modes. Perfect fifth, inverse of the perfect fourth, and then the major sixth and the major seventh, just what we would expect. So everything is major, except the ones that are perfect. Uh, which are going to be the same as what you would expect in both in both the major and the minor uh, scale. Okay, so the major and the main minor. I'm going to call it the major and the main minor because I always want to say it's the major minor because it's the minor scale. That's like the minor mode, the major minor mode, but it's the main minor mode. It's the main minor mode, so you don't double up on the major term. All right, so the second then is going to be a two note away major second boom boom how can i see that i can count it up because i can say five ten there's five i mean five notes between five and four three two the inverse of that would be ten minus or twelve minus two which would be a, a ten so the inverse would be a ten note away minor seven remembering that the majors have an inverse that is usually a minor i can double check that by starting on like a d and counting up ten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm two. Let's try this D. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you get to the C. So if it was a circle, you can imagine one way, two, the other way, ten. All right, so if I play from C to D, the normal way we would think of it, you got a two note away, major third. But if I went from the D to the C, ten note away, minor seven. All right, let's go from the, oh, I also know that the two of the major, I'm gonna continue to name the, the modes with absolute numbering intervals, which happen to line up this time because I'm gonna think of the Ionian or major scale as the key, our mode, the thing that we compare, the thing that we compare everything to. So when I look at these numbers, I'm not gonna change these numbers when I go to the next modes, I'm gonna say that the Dorian is always gonna to be to me an absolute mode number two as it relates to the key where I position myself, looking at like from a physics standpoint, like that's my point of reference is always the major scale. So I'm gonna say in relation to the major scale, the Dorian is always absolute mode number two, which will help me to orientate myself. Okay, because otherwise you're spinning around in space, and that's not the way you want to be. You want to be able to orientate. So that's so that means that the second of the Ionian or majors, of course, absolute mode number two, which is the Dorian, and you will call you'll recall that the Dorian is a minor mode which doesn't hang out in the penthouse. It's it's hanging over here with the 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 two just the two apart you know places two story place with the minor mode above it. Okay, so then let's go from uh, the second to the third, second to the third. And so now we're in the third. So the third of a major scale is of course a four note away, major third. Four note away, how do I know it's four notes away? Because if I go five is one note down, five note distance between strings minus one is four. So that's a four note away major third. The inverse would be 12 minus four, which would be a nine note away, which would be, uh, I'm sorry, 12 minus four would be eight notes away, which would be a minor eighth. So notice the major has an inverse of a minor typically. So if I went from C to D, like we normally would, that shape, I see that and I hear that as a four note away major third. But if I went from the E to the C, then the inverse is an eight note away minor uh, ninth. Okay, and I also note that the third of the Ionian mode number one major scale is what I would call absolute mode number three, the Phrygian mode, which as you can see is a minor mode, and the minor mode still hangs out in the penthouse with uh, the major scale, but it doesn't have the ocean view. It's on like the ground floor and it doesn't look towards the ocean. It's looking the other way towards like it's, 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 it's homies over, it's boys over here. It's, it's other crew, which is the minor, the minors, the A minor, and then uh, the Dorian, the, the minor scale and the Dorian. Okay, and then, uh, and then, so let's go to the next one. We're gonna go then to this one we're going to say now we're on the fourth of uh the major scale the fourth of a major scale is a perfect fourth so it's going to be a five note away perfect fourth how do i know it's five notes away because it's five notes between the strings five notes away boom and the inverse of that would be 12 minus five which would be uh seven seven note away perfect fifth so if i go from c to f five note away perfect fourth from f to c seven note away perfect fifth we also know that the fourth of mode number one ionian otherwise known as the major scale is of course mode number four and the fourth is a major therefore it's a major mode and you can tell that because it's sitting in the penthouse and it's looking towards the beach up here so it's in the preferred uh, position, like the, the, the nice part of the penthouse there because the majors, you know, they, they help each other out over there and they, they have the nice place. Whereas these guys are living, looking towards the tail, like that's where the dumpster's at really, I get apparently. It's where you have to, you know, twist things and stuff. That's where they do the, 
the construction work and whatnot. I don't know. So, uh, so that is going to be, that's where that one lives, right? Okay. So then let's go to the next one and we're going to the fifth and we'll go back on over here uh, to the fifth. So the fifth of uh, the major scale is a perfect fifth, like most fifths are. Just right where you would expect here, the fifth, because if you did this shape going backwards, it would look like that. That's our classic shape, the one, three, five. And so now we're on the fifth. So just those two is the fifth. So I'm gonna say, all right, how that's a seven note away. How do I count that? Well five ten nine eight seven what's the inverse 12 minus seven which is five five note away perfect fourth so if i go from the c to the g seven note away perfect fifth but if i went from the inverse from the g to the c that's a five note away perfect fourth the fifth of the mode number one ionian is of course the fifth or mixolydian uh, the fifth mode, which is mixolydian, which is also a major mode, but notice it doesn't hang out in the penthouse because it's got that flat seven making it kind of bluesy. So it still likes to hang out with like the minor folk, uh, the, the, the minor scales and whatnot. So it's over here in its own two note per string, meat of the hamburger flat hanging with the A minor. All right, so, uh, with the minor, so the minor mode or the, the, I, the Aeolian mode, okay. Uh, let's go to the next one then. Uh, now we're gonna go to this, the right of the meat of the hamburger of the flat, which is of course the Aeolian. And uh, that's gonna be the sixth of the major scale. So the sixth of the major scale, we know is a uh, nine uh, note away major six, looks something like that, let's say. And I'll finger it like that. And so we're gonna say that's a nine note away. How do I know it's nine notes away? Because 5, 10, 9. Inverse, 12 minus 9. 9, 10, 11, 12 is 3. 3 note away minor 3rd. So if I go from the C to the A, that's a 9 note away major 6. But if I went from the A to the C, that's a 3 note away minor 3rd, noting that the inverse of the majors are the minors. The inverse of the perfects are perfect, right? You can't have an inverse of a perfect be unperfect. How could the one side be perfect, but you flip the coin on the other side's unperfect, right? So if you make something perfect, then you invert it. It should still be perfectly inverted, you would think. And anyways, we know that the, the sixth of the major scale, mode number one, Ionian, in other words, is of course the sixth mode, which is, I'm calling it the absolute mode number six in my thinking as we tie it to the related key of the major scale, which is Aeolian, otherwise known as the minor scale. And it doesn't hang out in the penthouse either because it's a minor scale. It doesn't hang out on the bottom floor like its buddy over here, the Phrygian, but rather it's hanging in its own flat with the cool, with the cool uh, major mode the mixolydian, the bluesy major mode that also shares that minor, that flat seven in common. Okay, so then let's go to the next one. We're gonna go to the seventh. And so we're gonna go down here to the seventh. And so boom, boom, this is gonna be a seventh kind of a reach. So I'd say that's uh, the 11 note away major seven. 11 note away major seven, we can count that out by saying five, 10, uh, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. 11 note away major seven. Okay, inverse 12 minus 11, one, one note away minor second, therefore. So if I go from the C to the B, oh, hold on. 11 note away major seven. I hope I got that major seven. Inverse going from the B to the C, one note away minor second. Okay, we know that the seventh of the mode number one, Ionian, otherwise known as major scale, is of course the seventh absolute number seventh mode, which is Locrian, the crazy one. It's loco. And, uh, uh, and so the, where does it hang out? It hangs out in the penthouse behind, right behind the sea. But it's really, you think, I think of it kind of like in the attic because no one really, no one 
everybody kind of stays away from it. It's kind of in the attic. It doesn't come out. But then when you need it, sometimes it works out good. But it's like in the attic up there. Just, just uh, if you need it, then you pull it out of the attic. But otherwise, a lot of people kind of stay away from it. All right, so then we're going to go back to the octave. Boom. There it is. All right, before we go backwards, you know, recently somebody called me a Sudoku intellectual. And, what, and while I enjoy the game, I must say I'm not actually a Sudoku intellectual because there's way better Sudoku players than me out there. What's that, Phil? You're, not, you're calling me a pseudo-intellectual, not, not a Sudoku intellectual? Huh, well, I, I, must, ad, I must admit, Phil, I, I don't think I've ever played pseudo, the pseudo game. I've been, I've been far too immersed in my deep and profound studies to get involved in, with, with, whatever the ki with whatever the kids are doing these days, you know? Uh, all right, let's go the other way here. So I'm gonna go then the other way. Starting, I'm gonna measure everything. Ah, man, I'm gonna measure everything from this bottom C, which is kind of backwards, but we're gonna. That means we're gonna be looking at the inverse. So now, if I if I started at the eight or one and went behind it, then of course I would be going to uh, back from the one or eight to the seven. So if I go from here back eight to seven, I know that the seventh of a major scale is an 11 note away major seven. How can I prove that? I can see the distance from B, the way I would normally go, would be one note up. That would actually be a one note away uh, minor, minor second. So if I went from B to C, the normal way, one note away minor second. And then if I invert it 12 minus one, would be the 11 note away major seven. So C to B, 11 note away major seven. All right. And then, and then of course, I know that the Locrian mode is the seventh of the Ionian. And of course, again, it's right behind in the penthouse. It's right behind the C because it's in like the attic over there. All right. And then we're going to go down from the seven to the six. So seven to the six measuring from this C. So now I'm on this C and the six is going to be the A. So I know that the sixth of the major scale is a nine note away major sixth. And I can measure that by saying, if I go this way from the A, five, four, three. So that would be a three note away minor third, 12 minus three is a nine note away major six. So if I measured from the A like we normally would, that's just a minor third position three note away minor third. But if I invert that measuring from the C, it's going to be a nine note away major six. All right. And then if I go down and then I know that the Aeolian over here uh, mode is the sixth mode of the Ionian or major scale. And it's hanging over here, not in the house, but in its own flat uh, in the meat right side of the meat of the hamburger or flat. And then I'm going to go to the fifth the fifth here, right above the C, uh, we know that the fifth of a major scale or Ionian or mode number one is the, uh, is the fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth. And so how do I know that? Because if I measured from the G like we normally would, it would be five notes away. And then if I flip that to invert it, 12 minus five is seven and, uh, Right, so that's the seven note away perfect fifth. So if I measured or like I normally would from the G, top to bottom, five note that would be a five note away perfect fourth. But if I went from the C to the G, seven note away perfect fifth. All right, and then if I and then I also know that of course the fifth of the Ionian or major scale is absolute mode number five, the Mixolydian mode, which is the cool bluesy mode because it has the flat seven so it doesn't hang out in the penthouse over here in C but really hangs out in the flat uh, the meat of the hamburger along with the uh, minor scale all right so then we're going to go down to the fourth the fourth of the major scale to do is going to be over here to so the fourth 
And that's going to be for the major scale. If it's the fourth, it's a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because if I measure this way from the E, five, 10, nine, eight, it would be an eight note away, which would be a minor uh, ninth. So if I went from E to C this way, that shape is an eight note away minor ninth. But if I go from the C to E, no, wait a second. I'm sorry. That can't be right. That can't be right. This is five ten uh, on this E. Five ten. Am I on the right? And five ten. Hold on a second. I'm on the wrong note for crying out loud. I apologize. That's why it's a practice session. That's why it's a practice session. Don't beat yourself up. God. Now I've got that. Now I memorized the wrong thing. I have to unlearn it now. Okay. Let it go. Let it go. Just keep pushing forward here. So it's at, it should be the F. So if I so this is going to be five ten nine eight seven. So it's a seven note away, perfect fifth, measuring from the F to the C, measuring from the C to the F, inverting that twelve minus seven is five, and that's why I get the five note away, perfect fourth. So if I measured from the F to the C, that would be a seven note away, perfect fifth. But if I went from the C to the F five note away, uh, perfect fourth. Okay. All right. All right. I'm back on track. Idiot, man. Now you wasting your t wasted time with going the wrong way. You ran the wrong way. Okay. Let it go. Let it go. All right. We're going to the next one here. This is going to be the, uh, perfect fourth. So we know that the perfect fourth of the Ionian, the fourth of the Ionian is a perfect fourth. I can count that by saying five, ten, uh, nine, eight. Now, hold on. I'm on the third now. Now I'm on the third. I think I'm on the third. I apologize for messing up here. So I'm on the third. So the third is going to be a, uh, a four note away major third. I can count that up by saying five, ten, nine, eight. So five, 10, nine, eight. And so 12 minus eight would be then the four note away major third, four note away major third. So if I went from E to C, that would be an eight note away, which would be a minor nine. And if I went from C to E, that's gonna be a four note away major third. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm back on track here. And then if I go to the second, let's go to the second. We're gonna go up here to, to, to the second. Then now I'm measuring from, from this C to the second. So now that's gonna be then a uh, two note away major second. I can count that by saying from the D, five, 10. So that would be a 10 note away minor seven. And the other way would be 12 minus 10, two, two note away major second. So if I measured from the D, 10 note away minor seven, measuring from the C, two note away major second. And then that gets me back to the octave. Okay, back to the octave. All right. You know, so, you know, someone, just yesterday, someone was annoying me. So what I tried to do is I tried to flip the script on them. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flip the script in this whole thing. But unfortunately, the script was only one sided typing. So like, you know what I mean? So like when I flipped the script, I flipped the script and I just got blank pages because the back because they didn't do typing on both sides of the script. So I just had a blank page then when I tried to flip the script and therefore I just sat down. And then, and then the producer got mad at me because the script didn't say to sit down, you know? Okay. That was my flip the script joke. Been working on that one. I need to get a, maybe a better scenario with it. I, ha I think it has potential to be funny. I'm going to say, let's do the five note per string here. Uh, five note per string. Copy, paste, and then 
So I'm not five note per string, the five note pentatonic scale. I'm a little tired today. It's what is it? It's like the weekend of some kind, some kind of weekend day. So that's my excuse for being tired or not thinking. I'm not really tired. I'm just stupid, apparently, at the moment. Uh, so in any case, so now we can say if I do the pentatonic, then we have we, we can say I'm only going to take five of the seven notes. This is the best way I've seen to kind of explain the pentatonic. It doesn't tie in exactly the way we would kind of like to the other to the seven note, but that it is what it is, right? So so I see the pentatonic as having the two note per the, the two note per string barbell. I call it a barbell because we only play the outer notes of it, not the inner notes of it. And so, and then we've got the hamburger because that's like the computer hamburger, but we only play two notes per string. So that means my C, when I explain it this way, in these shapes are, it's, it's at the, 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 this is actually the bottom right because here's the full barbell and this is only the bottom part of it. It's the bottom right of the barbell. And then the major scale is at the bottom left bun of the hamburger. So we know before that when we looked at the seven shapes, this was in the box or house, top right of the box. Here's the top right of the box. When I look at the five, the two note per string pentatonic shape, it lands on the bottom right of the barbell and then the bottom left of the hamburger. That's just the way it is, okay? That's just the way it is on the pentatonic. So if I was to play this up, we're on the bottom right of the barbell, top bun of the hamburger bottom bun or middle or meat of the hamburger and then the bottom left bun of the hamburger now if i was to count that up i could you have a counting problem with the pentatonic because i could count it up to five or six because there's five notes plus back to the octave which would give us six so that would be one two three four five six which is cool easy to do but when we compare it to our our scales we it doesn't really fit because the intervals are all designed out of, out of a seven note a seven note scales right so i could then try to count this up as though it were looking at seven notes so uh so for example i could say i'm trying i need another color here uh let's just do this and so Oh man, dude, what's your problem, man? So, and anyways, if I was up here, we're gonna say that would be the first, and then so the pentatonic goes from the first uh, to the second to uh, the third, and then it skips the fourth, goes to the fifth, uh, goes to the sixth skips the seven and goes to the eight. Now remember, I usually we usually think of the pentatonic, how it fits into the major and it fits into the minor perfectly. So you have to orientate your, your counting, whether you're in the major or the minor, again, to see what, the, what it is related to the mode. But I'm looking at the major now, so we've got the one, two, three, skipping the four to the five, six, skipping the seven, uh, seven to the eight. So if I count that out that way, so we've got one, two, three, five, six, eight. One, two, three, five, six, eight. One, two, whoop. One, two, three, five, six, eight. If I look at the intervals, we can say what happens. It goes from the one to the two. One to the two is a whole step. From two to the three is a whole step. Uh, from three uh, from three to the five is a three note step, right? It's a three note step because we skip the half step. And then uh, five to the six is a whole step. And then six to eight is a three note step once again because we skipped uh, the seven. So that's gonna be uh, the pentatonic, how it kind of fits inside of the major and has its own kind of shape constructions that you might think about and you could try to build like here's my my 
pentatonic. Some people like really know the pentatonic best and then try to fill in from this shape where what makes things a major, the different modes uh, from there. But it's a little wonky to do that because the pentatonic again fits beautifully into the major scale and the minor scale, but doesn't fit as nicely into all the other modes because you're going to be missing an you know the, the because the notes will be different you know one of the major notes will be different anyway i'm going to stop that for that we'll, we'll ponder the pentatonic more maybe later so then uh let's go from this c to this c i'll probably stop soon let's go from this c to this c and say all right what happens with that one well if we do that one we start off like at the we're in the box again so we're in but the box has been shifted up because of the earthquake down here the bottom floor shifted up so uh but we're still at the top of the penthouse on the box looking towards the ocean and then we we go boom boom and then we're then we're at the bottom that but it's been shifted up so i have to step up the invisible curb uh up to here and then boom 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 and then we're at what I would call the top of the double stop box shape, but you only have that top bit. So boom, 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 back home. If we look at the intervals, then of course, let's do this more quickly here. We're just gonna say, we've got the first to the second. The second of the major is a two note away major second. Inverse 12 minus two is 10. 10 note away minor seven. So if I go from the C to the D, two note away major second. If I went from the D back to the C, 10 note away minor seven. The second of the Ionian is the is mode number two, the Dorian, which is not in the penthouse place, but hanging over here in its own, it's doing its own thing, hanging with the cool bluesy Mixolydian scale. And then we go down to the third of the major scale, which is the uh, three note away minor third, which now, instead of it being like back here, it's right underneath because of the shift in the tuning, making it look like it's a perfect fourth, but it's not. It's a uh, major third now because of that kink in the tuning that we have to be careful of. So if I take the inverse, it's 12 minus three, which gives me a nine note away my uh i'm sorry 12 minus four it's a four note away major third 12 minus four is an eight note away minor ninth so if i go from c to e four note away major third e to c uh eight note away minor ninth uh is the that's the thing and the third is the phrygian mode the third mode of the ionian third mode absolute is the phrygian it's still in the house here because this is the box, but it's in the back. It's not looking towards the ocean. It's on the bottom floor looking back towards, you know, the, the, um, like the energy production area where we crank things and, and do stuff over here. Like you got manufacturing. It's like the utility department back there that it has to look at because it's not in the, it's not in the front of the penthouse because it's a minor mode. All right, and then we're gonna go down to the next one, which is gonna be the fourth. And so the fourth of uh, the, the fourth is here. But boom which again is shifted up. You would think that would look like a flat five, but it's not. It's a perfect fourth because of the kink in the tuning, the stepping up of the curve, the earthquake that just shifted the ground underneath us. And so that's gonna be uh, a five note away uh, perfect fourth. I can see that because it's just five notes. If I go from here to here is now five notes because of the shift. And so, so, and then the inverse of that is 12 minus five, which is seven. So if I go from the C to the F, you have a five note away, perfect fourth from the F to the C, it's a seven note away, uh, perfect fifth is the idea. And the fourth of the Ionian or major scale is of course the absolute mode number fourth, the Lydian mode, which is a major mode, which is why it's hanging out in the penthouse, but it's not on the suite on the top floor, it's on the bottom floor, but it's still looking towards the ocean. 
All right, and then we're gonna go then to the next one. This is gonna be the Mixolydian. Mixolydian, duh, duh. Okay, so then that, that's gonna be the fifth of, uh, and we know the fifth is a perfect fifth. So here's a perfect fifth. Uh, it's, 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 it's shifted up because of the kink of the tuning. So it's a little bit more of a reach we could see five, six, seven. It's a seven note away, perfect fifth. Inverse, 12 minus seven is five, five note away, perfect fourth. So going from here to here, seven, whoa, wait a sec. Seven note away, perfect fifth. From G to A, five note away, perfect fourth. The fifth of the major scale, Ionian, mode number one is the fifth mode, Mixolydian, which is a major mode, but doesn't hang out in the penthouse because it likes to chill with the with the people that share the flat seven, uh, therefore it hangs out with like, right now it's hanging out in the, with the Dorian mode, a minor mode over here. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the sixth and it's gonna be the sixth of the major scale is a nine note away major sixth. I can count that up by saying this would be five, 10, nine inverse of that 12 minus 9 9 10 11 12 three note away minor third therefore if i go from the c to the a which looks like a 10 note away uh minor seven but it's not because of the kink in the tuning it's going to be a nine note away major six but if i go to the a to the c then that's going to be a uh i'm so wait a sec wait a second i got confused uh if i go from yeah yeah, it's a, it's a nine note away major six. That's right. Now, why are you second guessing yourself? I know what I'm doing. And then if I go to the from the A to the to the C, that's a three note away minor third. Okay, one more one more round. One more round. Uh, this is going to be the seventh, uh, which is an eleven note away major seven. Boom, eleven note away major seven. Uh, wait a second, is that right? No. What are you doing? 11 note away, major 7. Yeah, that's right. And so, so how do I know that? Because I can count that up. That's going to be 5, 10, 11. Inverse 12 minus 11 is 1. 1 note away, minor 2nd. So if I go from the C to the B, that's a 11 note away, major 7. If I go from the B to the C, one note away minor second and that of course brings us to the octave all right that's going to be that you know i've been messing with uh this song the smurf song because christmas is coming it's not really christmas here yet but in the philippines i i work with people in the philippines and they say that christmas season starts already now and i've been listening to the classic smurf song here you i don't think you can hear it here i'll sing it for you goodness makes the badness go away goodness makes you happy every day so i was trying to figure this song out <laughs> it just goes and it goes something like on the sea uh goodness makes you happy every It's a good song that you can kind of figure out interestingly i was going to do a whole like thing on it just because you know it's got a, a simple tune that you could figure out like on one string and then i was thinking you know then obviously the next thing to do is try to convert that to basically chords right so i've just played it in c here so goodness makes the badness so then i went right behind so if I look at this, what did I play? I could be like, okay, what did I just do then? I went here, I was like, goodness makes the badness go away. All right, 
it that just goes, goes, goodness makes the badness go away. And then it goes like, and then it goes like, goodness makes you happy every day. So I, I'm not, I won't do the fade away. Goodness makes you happy every day. And then it goes. Badness cannot. Badness cannot stop, start. So it goes up to that. Badness cannot start up to this E. If there's goodness in your heart. So, badness cannot stop if there's goodness in your heart. And then it goes, and then it just ends out going, goodness makes the badness go away. So, goodness makes the badness go away. And then the, the next thing to do, of course, is we can just convert those into the scale, it's all in the key of, I just played it out in the key of C. So I can then say, well, C, if I play the C, that's a C major. So I'm gonna say that that would be a major uh, because you could see with the major uh, uppercase and lowercase, the B is gonna be that funny diminished one. And then uh, when I get to an A, that's gonna be an A minor. That's what would fit in the scale at least. That's what I'll start off with because the minor is the six, which is a minor indicated by this lowercase uh, letter. And then the G is gonna be a major. And then the D is gonna be a minor because it's the second or Dorian. And then the E is gonna be a minor because it's the Phrygian. And then the F is gonna be a major because it's the fourth or uh, the Lydian. So then I can just say, all right, let's just, convert that to chords just for the fun of it. Goodness makes the badness go away. So that's C. Goodness makes the, and I'm just gonna play the diminished like this right behind. Badness, I could put my finger down. I'll just do, I'll just do. Badness, you could play it like, but I'll just do this. Badness, uh, and then A. Go, uh, and then G, way. And then, and then it goes. Go, goodness makes you happy every day. So that's gonna be then. Goodness makes you be happy, the diminished happy. And then back to the C, every, and then to the D, which should be a D minor. Day in the key and then it goes see badness cannot start start to the e to the f if there's goodness in your heart so see badness cannot to the e start if there's to the f goodness in your back to the c heart and then goodness makes the Badness go away. Goodness makes the badness go away. So it actually kind of makes sense the way they put this little tune together because it goes, the C is happy because it's a major, and then it goes down to the 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 seven, which is kind of a tensiony sounding, kind of bad, I guess. Badness go. And that would be a minor, which is kind of darky sounding. And then it goes back to the to the lighter sounding major G. So goodness makes the badness, which is a darky sounding when you get to badness. And then it says go badness. Go away. And then when it says go away, it gets to a nicer, lighter note, which is a G, which is the major, and then it goes, goodness makes you happy every day, day, every day, so it starts on a major, goodness makes you happy, it's kind of
kind of funny that it hits that tensiony sound on the happy, but happy, and then uh, back to the C every day. Now that's lands on a minor, even though it should be like a happy point right there. So you could try to throw on a major there, maybe, to make it more happy sounding. But I think that's why it fades out. And then it goes, badness cannot start if there's goodness in the heart. Which kind of makes sense again, because it's on a happy C major. Bad it cannot start. And then it goes into that kind of heavy minor E. If there's... And then it goes to the happy again, which is kind of fighting against the minor E. Here's the minor E against the happy. F major. Goodness in, if there's goodness in your heart, back to the C. And then goodness makes the badness go away. And then of course ends on the C. Goodness makes the badness, which again is the tension he's sounding. Deep song, deep Smurf song right there. I've been messing with uh, the Hallelujah song again. I've been messing with that one for a while. Key of A minor, basically, or that's how I think of it at least. So I'll try to play loud and then soften it up with the vocals, right? So it's like... You 
routine. Oh, there was a secret code that did it played and it plays alone. Let me try it again. I'm gonna get my commentary. Heard there was a secret code that did it played and it plays alone. But you don't really care for music, do you? No, I do care about music. I want to know the secret chord that pleases. Okay, okay, I'll tell. Hey, here it goes like this: the fourth, the fifth. My chord, the major lift. Baffle can compose the hallelujah. Wait, wait a second. You said it was just one chord that pleases the Lord. That was like five chords. I don't even think they're in the same. Okay, look. Look, it, 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 it does take more than one chord to please the Lord. It take, but the point is, the Lord likes his music, okay? That's the point we're trying to get to. The Lord likes his music. That's why we say, Hallelujah. 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 You need it to if you saw her bathing on the road Her beauty in the moonlight over to you But she tied you to the kitchen chair She broke your throne and cut your hair And told you let you do the hallelujah You know, Samson is not the smartest hero, right? I mean, he gets tied to his chair, hair cut off sapping him of his strength and he's sitting there like you know i think i i think i might have been betrayed here i don't know but i think not to worry though his his hair will grow back at least enough to give him the strength to tear down this house alive that's what i'm talking about and i get a hallelujah Another one. I'm missing a lyric here. Wasn't there a line about a pilgrim or something? Let's just try those two again. I could do that. about music I want to tell me what tell me what the secret chord is I care okay okay look here's how you go it, it goes like this the fourth the fifth wait wait a second you said it was just one chord that pleases the. That was like a whole bunch of chords. I'm not even sure they're in the same key. All right, all right look, it, ta it takes more than one chord to please the Lord, all right? But I mean, the point in this is the gist here is that the Lord likes his music. The Lord likes his music. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we say, Hallelujah. But 
she tied you to the kitchen chair. Took your throne and cut your hair. is not the smartest of heroes. You know, he gets tied to a chair, hair cut off, sapping him all his strength, and he's sitting there like, you know, I think I might have been betrayed here. Possibly, but not to worry. His hail will grow back at least enough to, to tear down this house of lies. That's not what's going to get a hollow. Hallelujah.